So procrastination is that dreaded beast. It gets in the way of us completing that really important task we all wanted to complete. Now, there are all sorts of different procrastinators, but let's be honest, they all amount to the same thing. Procrastination just gets in the way of stopping us achieving our goals. Now, I'm gonna go through five or six different ways we can look to defeat procrastination today. So I often see people talking about procrastination as being this big evil thing, and I've just called it this dreaded beast that gets in the way of our progress. Now, one of the first things we've got to understand is we need to stop beating ourselves up about procrastination because everybody does it. Some certainly do it more than others, but procrastination is not, is not new. So what we need to do is we need to look at the tasks we're doing, how we can make them valuable, how we can make them enjoyable. And if we can't manage to do that, but we've still got to do the task, then what can we do? What different techniques can we use to stop us from procrastinating? So number one, the first technique, and I've really come to like this one, is to decide what your one big thing is. You can decide it the night before, you can decide it in the morning, it doesn't matter. But at the beginning of each day, have one big thing that you really want to achieve. Now, it can be something that you've put off for a few days now and you're finally gonna get it done, or it can be something that you've decided you just want to do that day. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure you've got the one thing that is non-negotiable, you're going to get done today. Now it doesn't have to be work related or school related, it can be more social, it can be that you really need to call your Aunt Doris who you've not spoken to for ages, or you've got to get in contact with your friend to tell them about the latest FIFA Ultimate Team. But it's something that you really must get done. So it could be that book report, it could be that presentation for work. Just make sure that you've got something that you're focusing on. Now, what that does is it helps you hold yourself more easily accountable because you know that's something you're going to achieve that day. But also, once you have achieved it, it gives you that sense of reward and it lets you know that you've achieved the primary outcome for your day. So when we talk about no matter what, we're more looking at them in a self-growth sphere. Of course, there are some no matter what, such as you've got to feed your cat, you've got to feed your kids, and they're non-negotiable, of course they must be done. But really we want to look in that self-growth sphere. So, do you want to put 30 minutes aside for exercise? Do you want to get to the next chapter of your book? Or, really importantly, do you want to take some time for yourself and your own personal growth? Now, by setting this goal at the start of each day, what you're doing is you're giving yourself the maximum amount of time to get it achieved. Do this and there's no limit to how far you can go. Secondly, are you overcomplicating things? Are you waiting for the moment to be perfect? Are you waiting for the wind to be blowing in a northeasterly direction? Are you expecting a four-leaf clover to sprout through the sidewalk? Are you waiting for that full moon? Well, stop, because it's not gonna happen. The moment is never going to be perfect. So there's a saying when it comes to investing that the best time to start investing was 10 years ago and the second best time is today. So start investing in yourself today. Do that task that you've been putting off. Ask him, her or her out. Enroll in that art course. Just get on with what it is you need to be doing because there's some satisfaction in just getting it done. Now, you'll also start moving ahead and you'll be able to go on to the next task and the next task. And before you'll know it, the personal growth will just be shooting up like a mighty oak tree. So for our third idea around beating procrastination, we're going to go with a more fun one, and that's about rewarding yourself. Now certainly it's been shown that rewarding employees only leads to small term jumps in their motivation, if at all. But actually we also know that rewarding yourself works differently and that it can be really effective to drive you forwards. So you've been procrastinating for ages now, you've been putting off that project plan, you've been putting off that revision. What we're going to do is we're going to say, let's break this down, let's put it into 90 minute chunks. We're going to do 90 minutes solid revision. We're going to do 90 minutes solid work on our project plan. And when we get to the end of it, what we're going to do is we're going to allow ourselves to be rewarded. And we're going to set our reward before it. Of course, we're not going to make it this huge reward. We're not going to say we've done 90 minute work. So we're now going to have three hours worth of uh, football or video games or not. Maybe we're going to do something small. Maybe we're going to be really sensible and say we'll give ourselves a nice healthy treat. Or maybe we'll say oh, I really fancy a sugar rush after that and uh, we'll go with this instead. But what you're doing is you're setting the reward out there up front 
And that's going to allow you to focus harder on the work you're doing because you know something good is coming at the end of it. Now you've had your reward, you're fired back up, you've got the gas back in your tank and you're ready to go again and do another 90 minutes, be it revision, be it project work. But what I do know is you're going to absolutely crush it. Now for number four, I'm going to ask you to look into the future. And I'm not going to ask you to buy a crystal ball that offers me some kind of healthy kickback. But what I'm going to say is look at what it is you're trying to achieve and then find somebody who has already achieved that. Have a chat with them, understand what it is that they've done and how they've been successful. Now in the past I was trying to create these forms and I wanted to draw straight lines with the arrows going to each box and so on. And no matter how hard I tried they were wonky. And it was really frustrating. Now I could have carried on working at this for hours but I had uh, one of my colleagues who actually was really good at this and all their lines were perfectly straight and I thought they were just going to tell me that obviously I had some kind of issue with a non-steady hand and they had surgical like precision but it turned out that actually when they drew a line they just held down shift and the line automatically stayed straight. I had no idea about this and I probably wasted three four hours in the past and which really frustrated me, which led to me procrastinating because I put off creating these forms. Just through speaking to someone, I'd managed to get over that and now I draw perfectly straight lines on a computer. That's a, a claim to fame for certain. But really what I'm saying here is just by speaking to someone that has already done it, by looking into the future, it's got the rid of my desire to procrastinate because now I know how to do it and I know how to do it quickly, I can just crack on and get it done instead of being more and more frustrated by the idea of drawing yet another wonky line. So for number five, we're going to try and reduce some of the elements that we have to make decisions about every day. So I'm sure you've heard about Steve Jobs and Mark Zuckerberg and Steve Jobs with his famous turtlenecks and Mark Zuckerberg with his massive array of grey t-shirts. Now, I'm not going to tell you to completely throw out your wardrobe and buy one item but many types of it. What I am going to say is, let's think about how we can make decisions up front that will allow us to reduce the brain space we need and reduce that desire for procrastination. So, we all know that we should exercise more. They talk about uh, prescribing exercise to make us feel better. But when it comes to it, like, oh, shall I go to the gym today? Shall I not? Can I be bothered? Have I got time? Well, how about you decide at the beginning of each week that the gym days are going to be Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And then you've made that decision. You know you're going to stick to it because you don't have to put any more thought into this. So essentially what you're doing is you're giving yourself that turtleneck, that grey sweatshirt, and you don't need to worry about it anymore. Finally, a sixth trick, and you'll hear me talk about this a lot, is realise it's never going to be perfect. You know, allow yourself to be great by stopping that chasing of perfection. So, you've read that passage, you've read it hundreds of times now, and you just can't remember what it says. You're putting too much pressure on yourself. Understand that actually, there are going to be parts of an exam that you're not going to have the answer to. There's going to be part of your work that's going to be difficult that you don't understand. Now, allow yourself to understand that that's okay. You don't have to be perfect. What you can do, especially with work, is you can uh, go and ask somebody else. You can do some research, you can use Google, you can find out how to do it. It doesn't matter that you don't know everything first time. So don't let that concern you enough to stop you from even putting in the effort. If you can reduce frustration and allow yourself to remain calm, then you'll increase your ability to take information on. And being able to do that will allow you to understand it better. And if you can understand it better, you'll be in a much stronger place. So this calmness will help us work in a more confident manner and it will reduce the frustration, which will reduce our desire to not start working in the first place. So to sum all of that up, what we're going to do is we're going to stop overcomplicating things. We're going to make sure that we get that one thing done and we're going to understand what that is at the beginning of the day. We're going to look at rewarding ourselves and allowing ourselves to have something at the end of a sustained work or study period. We're going to try and reduce some of the unnecessary elements and some of the unnecessary decisions that we need to make by having a set plan at the beginning of each week. 
and we're going to look at the stopping the chasing of perfection but also we're going to look into the future and we're going to do this by talking to people who've already been there and done what we're looking to do. Now I hope this has been a really helpful video for everyone. If it has, let me know. If it hasn't, please still let me know. If you want to learn more about laziness and uh, why you may be lazy, then please check out the video that's linked here. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Have a great day, everyone.